Hi everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to Edinburgh Waverley Station. Today is something a little bit different. I'm off to Newcastle for the night. And why? Because I'm going to talk to you about travel hacking. If you're new to travel hacking, it's to do with the collection of air miles and points and redeeming them for free travel and discounted travel. Basically, that's what it's all about. Today's trip to Newcastle already hasn't quite gone according to plan, but I'll explain what the problem is later on. My number one travel hack is to use an American Express card issued by British Airways. And whenever I can, I will use that American Four, Express card. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. My number one credit card is an American Express card issued by British Airways. As many as possible purchases go through that card because every pound that is spent, I earn avios. I also have a plan B because not every shop accepts American Express. Mind you, some cheap shops do accept American Express. For example, Poundland, Iceland, and also Lidl, for example, all take American Express. And every time I shop there, I earn avios. Plan B, if they don't accept American Express, is to use my Barclay card, which is a MasterCard that also earns avios. That's my number one way of earning avios. You can also earn avios by buying airfares, but that can be a little bit expensive. You can earn avios through British Airways, Aer Lingus, American Airlines, Japan Airlines, Finnair, Iberia, Qantas, Qatar Airways and Vueling. To earn avios, all you have to do is open up an account with BA Executive Club. Easy to do and free of charge. I also find myself having a lot of downtime at airports and I do surveys. For example, there's a website called Avios. That was sneaking up on me, I didn't see that coming. You can also earn Avios through a, a website called aviosforthoughts.co.uk. And by spending five, 10 minutes, you can earn 20, 40, 80 Avios at a time. When you have a lot of free time at airports, that's what I do as well. It takes a while to add up or to collect a lot of Avios, but every little bit helps. Another way to earn avios is to shop through the BA portal. To give you an idea of some of the shops you can get access to, you've got uh, Sports Direct, Argos, M&S, Boots, Curries, Halfords and b and I actually did a little bit of a check once and I got bored after a while, but I counted over 700 shops available through the BA portal. And every time you spend a pound, you earn avios. I recently bought something through Curry's and there was a promotion on for every pound spent you earned six avios. That was a good deal. But other examples are DFDS Ferries, P&O Ferries, Trainline, National Express, Heathrow Express, but not Eurostar. It took me a little while to work out why they didn't do Eurostar, but of course, why would an airline promote Eurostar when you can fly to Paris, Brussels and Amsterdam? If you do use Eurostar on a regular basis, you should book through the Accor portal. Now Accor do um, hotels such as Ibis, Mercure, Novotel for example, and you earn points through them. Another great way of using the BA portal is to book accommodation. Here's a small example of some of the hotel chains you can earn avios on when booking through the BA portal. Are you ready for these ones? ISG, Hilton, Travelodge, Best Western UK, Accor, Booking.com, which I will get to in a moment, Agoda, Airbnb, Hotels.com, Marriott, Radisson, Thistle, Millennium and Ramada. Here's a train question for you. What do you think is the most popular website in the UK for booking train travel? If you said Trainline, you'd be 100% correct. I read an article last year and real, boss, uh, real company bosses just don't understand what the attraction is, it's just under good marketing. But did you know, most of the time when you book through Trainline, you actually pay a transaction fee. Why would you do that when you can book through the train company direct and get it for the same price without the transaction fee? But you can go one step further. Through the BA portal, you can book through, believe it or not, Transport for Wales. They give you the same fares, the same availability as anywhere else, including Trainline, but you also earn avios. And that's how I've booked my Lumo train down to Newcastle and back through Transport for Wales. I've paid for it by American Express card, so I'm earning avios. And I'm also earning avios because I'm using the VA portal. That is travel hacking.
If you'd like to start travel hacking and you consider getting a British Airways American Express card, I'll put a link in the description below. That is a personal recommendation and also I will earn a few avios for the recommendation as well. Okay, it's 9.30 a.m. at Edinburgh Waverley. I'm getting cold, I'm tired, I'm gonna get a coffee. guys I always feel boarding a limo train even with a seat reservation is like boarding a Ryanair flight it's usually total carnage inside we'll see how we get along this time Just like that we're in Newcastle. I'm staying at the Hampton by Hilton in Newcastle for four reasons. One, it's just across the road. Two, I need to top up my Hilton Honours points. Three, there's a Hilton promotion on where I can get bonus points. And four, they do breakfasts. That's one of the good things about Hampton by Hilton's. They always do a breakfast, it's included in the price. And I was really looking forward to a full English breakfast tomorrow morning to start the day off. Imagine my disappointment when I got this email one week ago. Due to essential maintenance work to our second floor, there will be continental breakfast only until the 24th of January, 2024. We're also unable to offer evening meals or our fitness suite at this time. We apologize for any inconvenience. Imagine my disappointment. And I was wondering, I wonder if they'll give us a voucher which we can redeem later as a way of saying sorry. Sorry, a token gesture of goodwill. Maybe they'll give us extra honours points. Now, I think the chances are somewhere between none and slim. Just for the record, tonight's accommodation was £59.20 for the night. You can actually use avios to pay for accommodation if you're booking them through the BA website, or you can earn avios by buying accommodation through the BA website. If you enjoy travel hacking, you have to be prepared to shop around for the best bargain. That's part of the fun. Recently I stayed in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden, a hotel called the Hotel Hedden Best Western Signature Collection, and it was beautiful. Now I've looked at dates three weeks from today. If I booked directly through their website, it would cost me 72 pounds. If I book that through the BA website, it will cost 74 pounds, but I will earn 725 avios, plus any avios I might earn by paying by an American Express card. If I go to booking.com, the same room, same hotel, £57. And if I use booking.com through the portal on the BA website, it will cost £57 still, but I will earn 342 avios, plus any avios earned through the American Express card. So it pays to shop around. Hotels offered through the BA website tend to be either mid-scale to upper scale, where I tend to use mid-scale to lower scale. So the hotels offered aren't much of a use to me. I still tend to use booking.com a lot. 
Worth mentioning, however, you might find some of the cheaper hotels on Booking.com not available through the Booking.com portal through British Airways, because there's not enough revenue to be made. And just for the record, I never use avios for flights. When you live in Scotland, you've only got Edinburgh or Glasgow to fly from, and to get to continental Europe on British Airways, for example, you have to fly via London. And that chews up a lot of your avios, and you're not even out of the country yet. And that's part of the reason why I use Ryanair and EasyJet to Europe. It's not impossible to do a video here at Newcastle Station, but it's close to it. Right, I've got about two hours to kill before I can check in, so I'm going to go and get another coffee, get me up to cruising altitude, maybe a sticky bun. So the Hampton by Hilton at Newcastle, it's directly across the road from the front door of the station. I really hope that the windows are soundproofed because the announcements at this station are almost non-stop. I've got enough Hilton Honours points for a free night, almost. So by staying at a Hilton tonight, I should get up to just about where I need for a free room. Uh, there's also the a platform nine is the 13. There's also a points promotion on the go as well, and I'm taking full advantage of that. There's a points plus promotion on with Hilton at the moment up until May 2024. 2,000 points for every time you make a booking. There's also a bonus of 500 if you use what's called a digital key. Now I've gone onto the app and keeping in mind I have a love-hate uh, relationship with technology. I love it, it hates me, I'll tell you. Something's gonna go wrong. I was able to allocate my room. It's got a view of the station. What could possibly go wrong? Well, the digital key doesn't work. Apparently I have to go up to the front desk with photo ID so they can activate this digital key. But I'm determined to get my 500 points bonus for doing that. And there's the Hampton by Hilton just across the road. It always seems to be so windy here in Newcastle. The last time I was here, it wasn't just blowing a gale, it was blowing a hooli. Right, I'm getting off this bridge now because, as they say in Scotland, it's blown a hooli. In fact, uh, Carol, the weather lady on the BBC Breakfast Show, she's from Fort William, she actually used that on the National Weather uh, Report once. Blown a hooli. I can imagine 95% of Britain's population was going, doing a what? <laughs> always wanted to go to a Newcastle United home game. I've always had a wee soft spot for a Newcastle United. I think it's the black and white vertical stripes. But until then, I'm just gonna have to put up with the outside of St. James's Stadium. talking to some of the staff in there. I said I was attracted to the shop because of the black and white vertical stripes, as I'm a St. Myrne fan. And they looked at me as if to say, Saint who? Right. Okay, let's keep walking around the city centre and then we'll get into the Hampton by Hilton. I was just thinking, I bumped into a subscriber at Edinburgh Waverley this morning and he told me that Elgin City also play in black and white vertical stripes. And I thought, can you imagine going into the Newcastle United club there and saying you're an Elgin City fan? They would probably be thinking, sorry Elgin, what? What are you talking oh about? Oh dear, confession time. I was trying to take a, a shot of a building back there and a mother and son walked behind me and I tuned into what they were saying and I thought, wow, this Geordie accent is really hard to understand, isn't it? Now I did look around, looked at them and I realized, no, they're actually talking Mandarin. They were Chinese. Duh. <laughs> It is really getting windy out there now. There's an amber weather warning for the north of England, south and central Scotland. In fact, a couple of trains have been cancelled as well. Hopefully I can get home tomorrow.
for a digital key it's pretty tangible isn't it maybe the first time you try it it doesn't work you have to have a physical key does that mean i don't get my 500 hilton honors points disappointing also she confirmed the fact that uh, it's a continental breakfast only oh well right do you fancy a guided tour of the room that is an adjoining room fortunately it's got a lock there television and a kettle coffee and tea good 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 a little workstation oh there is a usb yes and powerpoint right next to the bed and there's a phone as well aha okay oh we've got a safe which is big enough for a laptop don't know about that though what else we got same thing here oh jeez oh man right okay what's going on here nothing someone's tried to glue those into place metal on wood hasn't quite worked right let's have another look nice bed double bed is that a usb on that side as well yes all important temperature control Hotels always have 22 degrees Celsius. Have you ever noticed that? I know it's already behind here because I've already used it. It's a wardrobe with a sliding door. Iron, ironing board, hair dryer. And it's a one sliding door for the wardrobe and the bathroom. All right, let's have a look in here. Right, the bathroom. Let's have a look here. Towels. Everything looks pretty clean here. Yeah. Spa therapy. And the shower looks pretty clean as well. Not a sign of mildew. The shower head. Mm, just about passable. And they do have hooks, which a lot of places don't have in their bathrooms. This carpet isn't the cleanest I've ever seen. So with one broken lift, uh, dodgy handles, and um, basically a construction site outside, so far I'm not overly impressed. Let's look at the view. And there we have it, Newcastle Station. So the plan of action is to unpack, relax, and get that kettle going. I've been on the road since six this morning, so I'm a little bit tired. And uh, then I'll work out what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. I'd like to tell you a little story about my Accor membership. Last year, I think it was November 2023, I checked and I wanted to see how many points I've got. I've got about 95% of what is needed for a room. And I thought, I don't want to lose these points. And then I noticed when they were due to expire in two days. And I thought, right, what am I going to do about that? How am I going to keep these points alive? So I did a little bit of research and I found a website called clubopinions.co.uk and like Avios for Thoughts with British Airways and Avios, Club Opinions allow you to do surveys with a car. So I spent seven minutes, I earned 20 Accor points, they were credited to my account within 24 hours and now my Accor points are valid until the end of December 2024. Back in my corporate travel days, I used to try and convince some of my corporate clients to sign up to these legacy airline frequent traveler schemes. They were usually quite reluctant about it and I said, but there are benefits. For a corporate traveler, for example, if you are a member of a frequent traveler scheme, you're unlikely to be offloaded in the event of an overbooking. If economy class is overbooked and there's space in business class, if you're a frequent traveler, you're more likely to be bumped up to make space in economy rather than Joe Blow down the back there. And if you need any extra help from an airline, they're more likely to help you if you're a member of a frequent traveler club. I've got most bases covered. I have a BA membership with One World, Air France KLM with Sky Team, and Lufthansa with Star Alliance. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a heads up here. In October this year, I'm planning to take my son over to Australia. I was brought up in Australia and he's heard so many so he's about this place. I've decided to take him over and show him some of the sites. Of course, we're traveling with Emirates and we'll both be signing up to the Emirates Skywards scheme because according to my calculations, we might just get enough miles to pay 
for a ticket or even a return ticket with EasyJet, who they're in cahoots with, for nothing. So when it comes to frequent traveler schemes, if you're a regular customer of a certain hotel chain, I would recommend you sign up because it costs you nothing and you might find you get something for free. That gives you a little insight as to what goes on in the background when I make these videos. There's always avios involved or something. For example, the next video I'm doing, fingers crossed, I'm flying to Budapest for one night, then I'm flying back to Blighty again. I won't tell you why I'm flying to Budapest, but it's a good video, and I'm staying at the Novotel Centrum. I need to stay somewhere, so I may as well make it a part of the Accor group, because I'm that far away from getting a free night. If I'm going to have to pay for accommodation in Budapest, I may as well do it at an Accor property and reap the benefit. You know, I was just thinking, I haven't been in the bathroom yet to check out my UV torch. Do you want to go in there and see how clean the place really is? Yeah, why not? This isn't a hotel review of any sort, but I'm just dying to try out my UV torch again. All right, let's have a look. I think most of that is dust. Although, that could be condensation on the bowl. Can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Underneath the toilet roll, next to the bowl. Not overly clean. even splashes away up here. I don't know what's been going on. Um, well that's a granite top so that doesn't work too well. Loads of splashes down there that have not been cleaned up. Oh wow, look at all this. Right in the shower. Wow, now that's clean. Very clean. So what did I learn there? Well the shower itself is totally clean. But around the toilet itself, pretty dirty by the looks of things. Right, I'm going to go to my bed because I am absolutely tired. Outside, it's blown a hooli, as Carol would say. Uh, there are some trains cancelled. I'm hoping they're operating tomorrow. I'll find out eventually after I go to this fortifying continental breakfast tomorrow morning. Good morning, everybody. 7.45 in the morning. This bed here, very, very comfortable. I had an average kind of a sleep. I always do on the first night when I'm in a strange bed. Uh, the wind was pretty strong overnight, but it seems to have died down a little bit. Uh, once I'm washed, I'm gonna go online, see if there's any disruption to Lumo services to Edinburgh, and then we'll go down for our continental breakfast. <laughs> Well, I can say that was probably one of the more disappointing breakfasts I've had in my life. Packaged croissants, um, neutral grain bars, uh, some fruit, uh, coffee was good, but uh, some people were really not happy. They didn't even have things like butter for the croissants or anything. It was just very, very basic stuff. Uh, it filled a hole, but I think I'll be going out at some point and getting a proper breakfast somewhere. In regards to the travel hacking part of this video, if you do want to apply for an American Express card, the link is below. I'll put in a recommendation for you. I'll have that link there until the end of February 2024, then I'll get rid of it. Um, in regards to the rest of this video, it's about getting home. After last night's storm, trains are affected, a lot of them are delayed, a lot of them are cancelled, and I'm just wondering how I'm going to get home tonight. I don't really want to be stranded here for another night if I can avoid it. With all due respect to the good people in Newcastle, I want to get home. So stick with me and we'll see how I get back to Scotland. Well, it looks as if every second train between Newcastle and Edinburgh is cancelled today. Those which are operating, not sure if they're on time or not, but my ticket is for a 1500 something or other departure. I'm not hanging around. I'm going to be jumping on the first one I can just in case these trains are packed and they are going to be packed. You can guarantee it. This is going to be a struggle to get on board the train. Never mind, get back to Edinburgh. Wish me luck. I forgot to mention the shower was pretty good. I gave that a 9 out of 10. Pretty good shower. Nice and clean in there. Unlike here, it's just needs a lot of maintenance this place and it's overdue. The, the lift outside is broken, there's emergency maintenance being done on the second floor. The whole place seems to be falling apart. 
It's not a great hotel this one. Right, let's get over to the station and see what the carnage is. Right, that's me packed. Let the fun begin. Okay, let the fun begin. There seem to be quite a few trains heading for Queen's Cross, but not that many heading north to Edinburgh. I've got about an hour to wait, and there's a train heading north. Don't even know what road company it is. I think it's going to be a case of putting my head down and pushing my way in the door, so it's going to be absolute carnage on this train. One hour to go. We're sorry that your journey will take longer than planned. Darlington, North Allerton, York. The train at platform 3 is the 1027 LNER Azuma service to London Peace Cross. Okay, latest update. Uh, the trains are at 20 25 minutes late. Yes, things are fluid. Apparently there's a bus service operating. It's a LNER rail replacement bus service between Newcastle and Edinburgh. I don't have a ticket on LNER so I'm not even going to chance my luck. But at least my train to um, Edinburgh is appearing on the departure board now. Fingers crossed. Oh, and I'm not even going to try and film the boarding. This is not going to be pretty. And another update, apparently it's running late because it's making additional stops to pick up passengers stranded. That means this train is going to be absolutely chronically packed. It should be fun. Right, my cunning plan is to go to Zone 5, which is the last of the standard class cars. If it's absolutely rammed, I can then nip down to Zone 4, which is where the first of the first class car should be. Either way, I'm feeling optimistic I'll get on this train. Ha! Huh. Famous last words. I also might not film too much on this train, because that could be quite foolish. Give yourself plenty of time. Train doors may be closed and locked up to one minute before the departure time of the train. Good advice. This is to ensure your safety, comfort and a prompt departure from this station. Mm. Hexham. Calling it Gateshead So folks, this train is not running to Edinburgh. I've been advised for everyone to go to the main concourse where the large station departure monitors are. Just through the ticket barriers there. I believe uh, through uh, Newcastle station staff are trying to source replacement buses. Uh, the next two trains to Edinburgh are also booked to be Edinburgh train drivers, but to say there is no Edinburgh train drivers here. So folks, the uh, train is not running through to Edinburgh, this train is now cancelled, this train is now cancelled. Well that didn't go according to plan, did it? Uh, the train between Newcastle and Edinburgh are all operated by Edinburgh-based crew. With the lane just opening 30 minutes ago, they've had no time to get drivers down from Edinburgh to Newcastle to drive this boot back up. So the train's cancelled. The next two trains are also cancelled because, again, it's Edinburgh based too. So we're back to square one. <laughs> You must buy a ticket before boarding this train. I'm glad I didn't buy an LNAR ticket. I'd be going nowhere fast. I still have my Luma ticket for about 3 o'clock this afternoon. That's plan B, C, D, E or F. Somewhere down there. 57 Northern Service to Edinburgh. So what am I doing? I'm going for a little walk. I am booked on the 1517 Lumo service. That is always what the plan was. But with all the disruption, I thought I might just chance my luck and get on an earlier train. 
it's still looking pretty dicey at the moment so I may just relax go for a wander maybe get some lunch and then try the 1517 which apparently is still on sale through the Lumo website whereas earlier services are delayed or cancelled so that's looking promising I've never been down here before I wonder what this huge big wall was What an interesting part of Newcastle. I think this was the right decision. Instead of hanging around Newcastle station, waiting for nothing to happen, go for a walk. This part of Newcastle reminds me so much of Glasgow. Very similar architecture. Okay, I think I've actually wandered far enough from the station. I'm going to head back, maybe get some lunch, and then double check what the situation is with Lumo. Hopefully that hasn't been cancelled. Interesting. And look at this. I know it's McDonald's, but considering the breakfast I had, I'm starving. Well, that was more filling than my Hampton by Hilton breakfast this morning. Right, let's get back to the station and see what the carnage is. According to the Lumo website, um, the train is operating and it is on time. And I do have a ticket for it. But as you can see, that doesn't guarantee it's going to go anywhere. We'll soon find out. I think things might be getting back to normal. For the first time today, all 12 trains on the departure board aren't showing cancelled, they're showing delays on time. This is looking good. That was a tough video to shoot. It was going to be in three parts. It was firstly travel hacking, uh, Hampton by Hilton and Newcastle, and a quick look around Newcastle itself. Things started unraveling once I got to the city centre. Wow, that was a tough video, and I am so tired. Anyway guys, please watch and look out for the next video. I did mention it before, I'm going to Budapest for one night. And I won't tell you why I'm going there, because you won't believe me, but it's definitely one that gets failed in the totally crazy journey Older. So thanks very much for coming along this time and I'll see you next time. 15 Scotrail Express service to Castle Queen Street. Call